Hey there, welcome to the garden. I just came out to harvest a couple things, maybe pick some flowers for uh, a bouquet, and I thought I would just, you know, pull up the camera and chat a little bit. So the first thing that I need to harvest is some of this basil, mostly because I just want to make sure that I'm, um, basically that I'm pruning it enough that it keeps getting more and more bushy and gets a better shape. Um, basil's one that the more you prune it, the better things go. So I'm gonna harvest some of that, but I am making a pasta salad this week. I love pasta salad in the summer. I do just a really easy, you know, obviously pasta, and then I'll put a few cucumbers. I think I have some cucumbers over here, which I'm gonna grab today too. So some cucumbers, some pasta, I'll probably cut up a few peppers, um, put in some feta cheese and just use like an Italian salad dressing and some basil, um, maybe some cherry tomatoes, um, what else, you know, just stuff like that. I love just an easy pasta salad like that. Oh, and sometimes some of like the good olives from the olive bar, delicious. But anyways, let's take a look at the basil. It's doing really well. It's really happy in this bed, which is kind of good to know. I'm gonna make a note of that in my head that this is a good spot to grow it. I also have a couple eggplants I'm looking at that maybe could go in pasta salad. I might like cook them up real quick. Uh, let's take a look at those too. All right, here's the basil. We've got the real pretty um, pesto perpetuo. Um, real beautiful variegated basil supposed to have a good flavor as well and then just classic sweet basil so I am going to go ahead and with basil of course you want to trim right above where the leaves are gonna be so ooh, let's let's actually trim this back and then we'll get a good you know new flush okay let's do another this guy and I just want it to be a nice big full little basil bush so we'll do there too and then this one I've been a little bit slow to, like I should have pruned it probably earlier so I'm gonna take it back let's see I'm gonna take it back to right there I think take a big chunk off and plus I want a lot of basil for this salad all right there we go if the Swiss chard was looking better that would be perfect for a summer salad um, so I would <laughs> I would love to use that, but it's not looking great. I'm also noticing my green beans came up pretty spotty. I'm gonna have to come back in and reseed some more green beans because I want a little bit thicker harvest um, of those. So we'll just wait on those summer things. A bunch of peppers right here on my jigsaw peppers. I have to go and check, let me see, if these, I think these are edible. I'll, I have to go look. I got these from Baker Creek. It's a really pretty plant though. I mean, even if it's they're not edible, they'll be really pretty as like, you know, fall decorations. And then let's see how all of our eggplants, no eggplants on that one, but over here I see a couple. And these are the patio eggplants. I think they're supposed to be small like this. I think this is full size. So I'm gonna harvest it like that. Okay, I need two hands for this. And then we're gonna go grab a couple cucumbers off the salad bush cucumbers. I noticed they're back in action. The cucumbers will get a little bit bigger than this, but I wanna encourage this plant to really keep producing. And I'm noticing they're curling a little bit. That's probably a heat and water. Oh, there's a big one I missed all the way back here. Oh my gosh. I love these plants. They produce so many cucumbers. Okay, I'm gonna try to get in there and get that that big one back there. Look at this. Oh, so exciting. I'm glad I found this one kind of in the nick of time because as you can see, maybe starting to get a little yellow there at the end. So the big, this big one might not be, it might be too big. When cucumbers fully ripen, they turn like bright yellow. <laughs> Um, and they turn into these big things. I actually heard once that if, if like a cucumber fully ripens, it tells the plant to stop producing. I don't know if that's true, but anyways, it's always good to get, you know, get a, a fruit off before it gets fully ripe and yeah, just, you know, turns yellow and gets kind of, they're kind of weird looking when they get that big. Okay, now we're gonna also hunt down a few peppers. So, 
Let's see, in here I saw, this is a mystery pepper to me. I think this is the my Jimmy Nardello. I don't know what the heat is like on this. So we are gonna give it a taste and see see what we're doing. Keep your fingers crossed for me. I don't like super spicy things. I can't remember the Jimmy Nardello if it was super spicy or not. Like a banana pepper, although I know that I had banana peppers in that pot, but I know that can't be a banana pepper because banana peppers aren't usually this shape. This is the Jimmy Nardello pepper. They're supposed to be a really, really prolific pepper. I think you maybe are supposed to let this get red, which might change the flavor a little bit, but green, it just tastes like yummy, nice pepper, and it'll be perfect in a pasta salad. I love to have like, um, you know, just a little bit of that pepper flavor. I really personally love peppers. I will just eat peppers for snacking. I really, I really enjoy peppers. So pepper roulette, we're okay. <laughs> that was all right. There's not much else. Oh, here's a cucamelon. I'm harvesting cucamelons right now. Uh, and actually a lot of the ground cherries here. Oh, oops. That one was not supposed to fall yet. That wasn't ready. Although here's one. This was my plan was that the ground cherries would just fall onto the patio. That ground cherry is ready. Okay. Now I just need to look around kind of carefully and make sure I'm not missing any of the other peppers or anything. There's some jalapenos that I could pick. I don't think I'm gonna put those in a pasta salad because again, I'm not a big pasta salad fan. I might harvest a few flowers though. I wanna pick one of these straw flowers and see if I can dry it. And I'm gonna deadhead this plant as well because there's, these are dead. I need to plant, this is so pretty. It's just so cool. I need to get this plant out of its pot. It's still in its nursery container and I just haven't figured out where I want it. <laughs> so I need to get that one planted, but it's so pretty. I just really, I, I really love these straw flowers. Next year, I have already started looking for some seeds for next year, and I'm gonna do a lot of straw flowers next year. They're super fun, they're really interesting, and just even like that sound, so cool. And then I'm gonna pick a couple of the zinnias that I have over here. I've got a bunch of these um, zinnias and some of the Sunfinity sunflowers, and this is kind of like my cutting area over here in the unheated greenhouse frame. It's just a good, like, I don't really look at this area that much, so I don't feel as bad taking flowers out of it. Oh my gosh, amazing. So a couple unsung like flower heroes. Angelonia is a pretty good um, flower for a vase. It lasts pretty well as a cut flower. So I picked a bunch of Angelonia and then of course all the zinnias and this is the Indian summer Rubecchia. Incredible vase life, like such an amazing cut flower. And then I picked a few of these Echinaceas. Typically I find that the cone flowers are great cut flowers as well and then we've got just all kinds of zinnias a couple of the sunfinity sunflowers this is one of the peach apricot zinnias i got this year i love these just oh, 
all the queen lime zinnias. My zinnias are kind of small flowers because um, I grew them pretty close together and around lots of other things, so they're a little small. And then there's a few dead flowers on here, but I picked a little phlox because it smells so good and it's supposed to be a cut flower. And I've always like just loved it so much in the garden that I haven't brought it in as a cut flower, you know, cause I'm like, I want to just enjoy it out in the garden, but I want to kind of test out and see how it does as a cut flower. And then the last thing I think I'm going to cut is one of my eucalyptus. I don't know. It's so hard to decide. There's a eucalyptus in here. I want to see if this one even survived. Where did it go? Well, that one's down in there. But this is this really beautiful baby blue eucalyptus. It's been growing really it's gorgeous in this pot. And it has that nice, like, menthol y kind of minty, you know, eucalyptus smell. <sighs> Do I cut it? I don't think I'm going to cut it. I want to let it grow. I want to let it grow. I don't want to cut it. <laughs> wow, a pretty good harvest for me. I just swept up a little bit out here as well. Um, because I needed to do that. I need to find a home for that um, container, the corn. But thank you so much for spending a little time out in the garden with me. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.